Industrial action by teachers. Thousands of schools in England, Scotland and Wales face disruption or temporary closure as a result. Today, teachers have walked out in the Midlands and Scotland with other parts of the UK affected tomorrow. In January, the Joint General Secretary of the National Education Union, Kevin Courtney, told this programme the strikes were basically about pay. The industrial action we're talking about now is about pay. The IFS report last week says that a big problem in getting enough teachers in is the relative change in teachers' pay. That since, since 2010, teacher pay, according to them, on CPI figures has dropped by 13%. Average pay in the whole economy gone up by 2%. That relativity is what was what matters when a young person is considering uh, finishing university, considering what career they go into. Those relative pay levels matter. Uh, so what sort of, of rise of, do you, are you campaigning for? 13%, the, well, I guess? Well, uh, what we're looking for is something that will stop teacher pay falling and start it going up again. So that was Kevin Courtney from the NEU, the teachers' union, outlining his thoughts on pay. But there is another side, and it's a phrase that crops up a lot in discussions about industrial action. Those three words, pay and conditions. With the average salary for a teacher around £38,000, you might argue they already receive a decent pay packet. Yet we've heard many times on this show from teachers complaining about excessive workload, long hours and a lack of support. Those aren't the pay issues. The RMT, the Royal College of Nursing and numerous other unions have also made clear working conditions are a big part, maybe more than half the part of why they're striking. So today we're asking if you are striking because of conditions in your workplace rather than because of pay. You might even be fairly happy with your salary, but it's your working situation, the workplace, the rotor, whatever that has put you out on strike. Email vine at bbc.co.uk. Please include your phone number. Text us 88291. Send us a WhatsApp if you can on the long number 08000 288 Let's speak first to Gronje Hallahan from the Times Educational Supplement, a former teacher. Gronje, I guess pay and conditions go together so often, don't they? They do. And as Kevin Courtney just pointed out in the, the clip we just listened to, the conditions will worsen when we don't get the recruitment right. So because, as he was saying, teacher pay has fallen, we're not getting the same graduates coming in and saying, hey, I want to be a teacher, I want to join the classroom, and we're not retaining the same uh, staff. And when you've got staff shortages, that makes the working conditions for a teacher much harder. You're being asked to cover for your colleagues, you're being asked to teach outside your subject, you're doing longer hours, you're having to make up that shortfall because if there isn't a body in the classroom those children still need to be taught and the schools are really struggling to get cover in there's not enough supply teachers and so the workload falls to those teachers who are still in the school and their working conditions worsen as a result of the lack of recruitment and if we were trying to sum up the whole conditions issue would it do you think mm -hmm. for teachers it would just be in the single word workload <laughs> I think, it, I think workload is, is part of it and it's a type of work that they're being asked to do. So on the one hand, we've got workload where the teachers know this isn't actually improving the education of the students who I'm tasked to teach. They know they're doing it for Ofsted. The words that will strike fear into any teacher in any classroom, you've got to do this for Ofsted. So we're talking about things like, you know, you've marked the children's books, but that's not enough. You've also got to fill in a spreadsheet to show that you marked the children's books. You give them feedback on their work they've done a piece of artwork you're telling them you know what was good what, what needs improving but that's not enough you need to get a little stamp stamp their book and then write down what you've written sorry what you've said and it's these sorts of tasks that drive to they add they take hours and hours and hours they know it's not going to improve the what their children are doing it's not going to make them learn any more faster but they're being asked to do it all the same because it's this bureaucracy it's this demand that you know offset will want to see it and that adds to workload what do you say when people say ah oh, but they have long holidays <laughs> so I think people who know teachers will know that they work during the holidays and they will also know that in the holidays they're being used for things like catch-up sessions, they're being used for school trips, um, they're being used for booster sessions for GCSE prep. The holidays that you get, you know, it's lovely, it's great. It's it's always an attraction for teachers. You talk to teachers, they'll always say, you know, the holidays are, are a perk, but it's more than that, isn't it? It's, it's all very well working and having a nice long break, but if you've been broke, in the term leading up to it, it's not so great. And the, I think the biggest problem is it doesn't have to be like this. We could make changes. We know that the unions are asking the Department for Education and talking to Gillian Keegan saying, look, can we discuss Ofsted? Can we move from having four grades to just having schools 
either are meeting the standard or not meeting the standard, that would have a massive improvement upon teachers' working lives and, and their working conditions. And we know that would improve retention. So that is a key part of the negotiations. And what we're hearing is that it's not, it's not being seriously considered.